Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to say I'm joined today by Dr. Aubrey de Grey. Aubrey, how are you? I'm well, thank you, and thank you very much for having me back. Great. Well, Aubrey, we've got Longevity Summit Dublin 2023 coming up, um, 17th to the 20th of August. Uh, looking forward to the, the second iteration of your uh, of your summit. So what can we expect this year? Honestly, you know, I've been running meetings like this for 20 years, starting in 2003 in Cambridge and then Berlin, and of course, starting last year in Dublin. And I've been really proud of the speaking roster that I've been able to bring in each time. But I will honestly say that this time exceeds all the others. In fact, honestly, for a conference of this length, I don't think anybody has ever assembled a speaking roster as illustrious as this. Uh, I mean, um, so if you go to longevitysummitw.com right now, you won't see an actual program, but you do have the list of speakers. I think it's pretty much complete at this point. And you name it, they're there. It's like it's like amazing. And and so, of course, this is really important for the movement, that there can, there can be conferences like this, which are quite heterogeneous. Obviously, the longevity movement is very much a village. You know, it's got um, people from very different um, parts of it, whether private sector, public sector, philanthropic, whatever, and, of course, different uh, areas of expertise, uh, including, of course, not the science necessarily, in including things like um, advocacy and um, policy and so on. And it's all there. So, yeah, I am, you know, I mean... <laughs> I, 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 these conferences are, in a very real sense, what I live for. They are the they are the most important aspect of my community building work, which of course is a large part of my work. And this conference is going to be the best yet. Well, obviously, you've got some you know big hitters as well as some new faces. Um, so I can see there's a big variation in, in terms of subject matter and speakers. Is there a kind of general theme? I mean, I know that everybody's got their own disciplines, but is there something that we can look at uh, this event in 2023 as a as a theme? You know, the industry's going through some challenging times, both in terms of its uh, funding and uh, uh, and likewise, that that knocks on to people's confidence, and likewise, their scientific progress. But anything that we could pull out of this is something that we should be looking forward to. I would say absolutely. There's many things that that we should look forward to, but um, the fact that there are many kind of answers your previous question in the negative. In other words, there is no single theme, or even any kind of you know broad theme. And honestly, that's what I've always tried to do with these conferences: is to bring people together who might not go to the same conference. Uh, elsewhere you know um it seems to be uh the right formula it, first of all it's exciting for the speakers not to be surrounded entirely by people that that's just on the same circuit where they, which they see every month right um and also of course for the audience to understand that the nature of the divide and conquer approach that epitomizes sense is um, that it brings in people with very different disciplines, both at the science level and these days, of course, at the advocacy and outreach level to a greater and greater extent. So, yeah, I mean, so a lot of the names that you can see on the list of speakers who you might not recognise will be there to present work that people don't know about and they should know about. And that's what I do. So let's let's talk about the uh, the shape of the conference and who should be attending. I mean, obviously, you've got to, you know, we all know we've been at these conferences in the past. There's the the usual faces that you see. But obviously, these conferences are getting bigger these days, which is great. So, I mean, do you see that there'll be a, a new mix of audience, maybe more clinicians coming in or students, you know, whichever feel for that? Clinicians, probably not, because the focus of my meetings has always been relatively early stage, more PhD than MD. Um, students, absolutely. In fact, we've offered a very, very discounted rate this year for students, um, and we've always, you know, we've always wanted to encourage that. I feel that a large part of what I've been able to do over the years in terms of inspiring people has been inspiring young people, and I definitely want to carry on doing that. So, yes, we very much want that to happen. And, of course, the organisations we're working with um, that work in education, organisations like Less Death, uh, and the Longevity Biotech Fellowship, of course, which is now um, merged with Less Death, uh, and also, you know, uh, other uh, people working in education 
uh, these are people who are putting the word out, getting you know, raising the quality of understanding of this field among people at the undergrad level or even younger. Um, so we had a fair few of those last time in 2022. Uh, but yes, I'm definitely hoping to expand that quite sharply this year. Great. Well, uh, looking forward to it, Aubrey, as always. Now, and Aubrey, I guess with the uh, the annualising of your uh, R&D programmes and so on since uh, August last year, will we see some new announcements coming out at the summit of some new programmes? I very much hope so. So um, let me actually, you know, drill down on that question a little bit. So there's a very substantial difference between the way the LEV Foundation is doing things, at least at the moment, relative to the way that Sense Research Foundation does things and has done things. At Sense, um, pretty much all of our science projects were ongoing research things, whether it was being done in-house or being done extramurally. They were basically, you know, early stage stuff, no, but, you know, too, too courageous, too ambitious for other people to fund. We would uh, fund them for as long as necessary until they reached a kind of you know, sufficient level of proof of concept that investors would start getting interested, at, that, at which point we would spin them out as startup companies. Uh, but until that time, it was just an ongoing project. So, like the burn rate was more or less immutable, right? The situation—I mean—and we will have projects like that in due course at LEV Foundation for sure. <clears throat> but in terms of, especially in terms of the sheer you know, dollar amounts being spent, the predominant um, work that we do will be of the kind that we're doing at ICOR right now. In other words, self-contained individual studies that cost a lot, like $3 million a pop, basically, uh, because, uh, you know, a thousand mice, lots of different therapies, lots of different, you know, custom reagents to do, lots of labor. Um, um, you know, that's the kind of amount, but we'll do them as soon as we have the money to do them. So, um the first one, obviously, as I say, is going right now. It won't be done for like, you know, we are certainly a couple of years. Um, uh, but in parallel, we want to do more of them. We've got plenty, we've got quite a list of other interventions in other combinations that we want to um, deal with and um, that we want to try out. And so we want to do subsequent rounds of this same thing. Um, and every, you know, as soon as we get our next aliquot of, you know, $3 million, we'll kick off the next one. Uh, you know, of course, there's a process of design of these things. The design of the first study was done, was actually rather easy because we knew what we wanted to do in terms of starting from interventions that individually had um, already shown promise. We may be a bit more uh, liberal and sophisticated about how to choose interventions in the future, and that the process of deciding what to do is going to be done very publicly as well um, over the next couple of months, I, I'm going to say. Um, but of course, we'll kick it off only when we have the money to kick it off. Yeah, and and, and the sources that, of that uh, that money, Aubrey. Obviously, you know, you're you've been backing into the crypto community. You know, traditional sources of income are pretty pretty scarce in the marketplace at the moment. So, how will you go about uh, continuing your your fundraising for the foundation? Well, I mean, really the same way that I've always done fundraising, you know, getting out there on stage and on camera as much as possible, talking about what we're doing, inspiring people. Uh, now, you're quite right. The crypto community has been very important in um, uh, in the past few years as supporters of this movement and this work. And, of course, um, you know, a lot of the money that, um, that we're spending right now on the first study, on the first round, and on these other things like Kynice, uh comes from that source. Um, I... I guess I don't regard that as surprising because crypto people are, first of all, in inherently, you know, comfortable with doing things that are a bit unorthodox, which is basically what I do. And um, they're, also comf they're also geeks, so they understand the sense concept, the damage repair concept much more easily than a lot of people do. Um, and then on top of that, of course, more and more of them have reasonable, reasonably deep pockets. So, yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great relief to me. I remember the days when... Uh, before this was really true, when Vitalik Buterin was donating to Sense already, but basically nobody else was. But I was getting constant invitations to speak at crypto conferences, at which I would be the only non-crypto speaker. So it was very clear that, you know, I was sowing the right seeds. And that's continued to be true. 
Great. Well, Aubrey, very much looking forward to the, the summit 2023, which is the 17th to 20th of August. And I understand that there are early bird tickets available up until I think the 17th of May. So um, uh, I'll be there. Uh, looking forward to, to meeting you again. And uh, obviously, I'm sure there'll be a bigger crowd than there was last year as well. Absolutely right. Yeah. See you then. And I hope to see a lot of your audience there as well. Looking forward to that. Thanks for it. Thanks again.